Hello YouTube and welcome to Allie's Wonderland Creations. I am Alice Serafin and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Okay, I <laughs> take a deep breath. <sighs> breathe out. I have done this video three times. Uh, well, this will be the third time. I uploaded it to YouTube. Didn't realize I must have hit private when I uploaded it. So nobody could see this video. Thank you, Miss Susie, for saying, I'm still waiting on video number one. I had to go up there and figure out what was going on. I couldn't figure out how to make it public. And I couldn't retrieve the video because I had deleted it. Um, so I decided I'm just going to do it again. I am going to change one little thing, though. And it's nothing that, it, it's just me. I just wanted to to do a little something else because I no longer have um, the actual cardstock that I use. But I'm going to show you the first one, my sample one. This was stamped on basic white crumb cake, <coughs> Dream a Daydream DSP. It used lots of ribbon, gorgeous bag. Um, and this bag was inspired from Miss Della Dulac. She's a demonstrator in Wenatchee, Washington. Um, Anyways, this was the actual one I did on the video. I did the tag to the left. We're going to do the same thing with the ribbon. It takes quite a lot of ribbon, but I had plenty of this. Um, this cardstock this was on um, was called a natural cardstock that Stamping Up had. And I had just enough to do my card bases and the front of this card with it. And I was just using up some that I had. So I don't have that, um, cardstock to do that anymore. You could use basic white. I chose to use dream a daydream and I'm going to do all my stamping and stuff on that's the one side. This is the other. And I thought that's still that pretty petal pink and it should look really interesting with this little pattern because I, I just like, okay, I've got to change it up. I got to try some a lot I wanted to try it so um that's what we're going to do so I apologize I apologize for not realizing that I had hit private somehow instead of a public uh airing on this video let me walk through what you're gonna need this is my chosen piece of DSP this is the back from dream a daydream we are gonna cut this down to a 10 by 12. You, then I'm going to score on the 10 inch side at 2 and then at 8. On the 12 inch side, we're going to score at a half an inch, 5, 7, and 11 and a half inches. And we're going to do that all together. Now, for the layering pieces um, for the gift bag, they are just a little bit different. For the gift bag, my crumb cake layer is four by five and a half. Okay. This would you be your basic white, or this time I'm going to change it up to this piece of DSP. This is three and a half by five. This is for our gift bag. Now our card base, um, I do have one extra piece of that natural cardstock, which I absolutely love. Um, I'm going to use it. I have um, basic white is what you would use if you don't have any. It's five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter card base. Crumb cake is four by five and a quarter. Mine is the DSP, but for pretends, we're going to pretend it's basic white. Three and three quarters by five. Very vanilla would work too. Very pretty. So for the tag for the bag and for the tag for the card, let me show you the card is almost identical to the front. Use your positively the greatest. For the gift card and bag, you're going to need two decorative circle punches in petal pink. And you will need either two in the DSP we're going to stamp on the front, which will be like that, or you will need the basic white. It's up to you. Like I said, I'm just trying a little something different. I'm going to put those on my tag. Then we are going to need um, the Cottage Rose Bundle comes with this lot of dies, and I'm going to show you which ones. You're going to need two of those leaves. You're going to need two of the double flower. 
two of those little ones and two of the single flower because you're going to need one of each of these elements for one for the set for the bag and one set for the card. So I have those prepped. Now you will need blends. So I have my old olive, um, petal pink and so saffron. I've done most of my coloring already. I'm going to show you how I have done that. So I did two of stamped two of the leaves right here. I stamped two of these and I colored them in. So for the leaf, you can see I've already got the one colored. I'm going to show you how I did it. I took old olive and just wherever there was shading, I just scribbled. That's the dark. And then I went over it in little swirly motions with the light old olive. And that's how I did all of the leaves. I'm going to pop those back on my little magnetic clip. Now for the rose, you can see this one's not quite all the way finished. I've left one here. I took the light, um, this is darker light. I took the light old olive and I did all of these little stems. Okay. So I did that. Then I took the light so saffron and I just came in and gave a touch to all of those. In fact, this is the, yeah, that's light. Okay. Now for the light one also, we're going to need that in just a second, but let's grab the dark. For the dark so saffron, I did the bottom part of the inside of my flower. Okay. Just like so. Then I took the light and I just scribbled it way over on top of everything. That's how easy that was. And this is so easy. I'm telling you the, the fact that Stampin' Up's colors match their papers, make crafting amazing. So for the rest of my flower, I started with the dark. I just prefer to, you can start either way. I came into all of these little shaded areas that the artist who designed the stamp had already made this so easy for us. Okay. Just like so. Now I'm going to come in with the brush tip this time. And I just scribbled right on top of that. Now I'm going to tell you what else I have done. You can go over this. Um, if you want it darker, Go right on over it. This is light. I'm just double checking. My grandson's running through the house. It sounds like an elephant's in there. Sorry. <laughs> it's just the way he is. So you can always add color. You can't take it away. It is up to you whether you want to go real light or make it darker. Um, you can add more shading by just coming back in with the dark and going back over those areas. I mean, you can do as much or as little as you want with this. It is really, and I am just scribbling people. I am not, you know, getting really super picky. I am just scribbling a little, you hear that little squeaky noise? That's me just scribbling the ink in there where I want it, where I think it needs a little bit more. <clears throat> so I'm going to leave those as such and we're going to use those. But now we are going to move on to our bag. So I'm going to move my blends out of my way. Move my notebook out of the way. And we're going to grab my paper trimmer. Open that arm up because we're going to need to do so. I'm going to clean my track with my little toothbrush, get those little paper fibers out of there. And we are going to start since this is a 12 by 12, I only need to make one cut and that's at the 10 inch mark. So I'm simply going to cut this off. That's going to get saved for something else. So next we are going to score on the 10 inch side. We are going to start to score. Let's scoot this down this way at two. So right there at two. 
I was like, oh no, I'm going to need to make a whole new set of like six cards to go in another bag. <laughs> so now I'm going to scooch it on down to eight. Not sure you guys can see the eight, but we are at eight. And I am going to score. Open that up, the guide, and turn it to the 12 inch side. Now the 12 inch side, you're going to start at half an inch. And as my paper has to curl here because of my stand, my computer is. So half an inch sometimes can get tricky. So there's a half an inch. Then we're going to move down to five. And we're going to score at five. At seven, that gives us our two inch bottom to fit all these beautiful cards in. And then scooch it way on down to 11 and a half. Not 11 and three quarters. <laughs> 11 and a half. And um, I told my husband, I've got to go do this. And him and his brother are going to be just fine. In fact, they went out. So I don't feel bad about being in my craft room while I had company. So we are all done with all of that. We are going to next start folding everything. So I'm going to get my bone folder. I like to score fold crease, however you want to put it. I like to do it away from me. So I'm not sure you can see this first one as it's not wanting to stay up there so you can. So I'm going to just start it and then I'm going to go over it. And since I have this here, I'm going to add a bead of glue. That is a half an inch, right? I always, sometimes, you guys, I just have to double check. Sometimes I get like, did I just mess up? Which I have, you know, it happens. So I'm going to add a bead of glue to that. Now I'm going to go to the next score line. Fold up. Really almost don't need, the DSP is so nice, you don't really need the bone folder. But use it, it makes nicer creases. So I'm going to open her up and go, you can see this is the bottom of our bag now. So there's the bag. Now we have that little piece and this I'm going to fold towards me. It'll just be easier. I'm going to crease it first and then I'm going to add a bead of glue. Now for Miss Della's bag, she likes to fold this piece to the outside and have that, um, she folds it over and it gives you a little bit of a trim on the outside. For this bag, I didn't want to do that, but I like folding it over because when I go to put my um, holes in the, the side, it's going to give it that little bit of stability. So now we're going to crease this way and I like to have it glued down when I do this. That's why we did that. And there we go. There's that one. And then we're going to do this side. I want to get a real nice fold there where I have it glued down. And now we are ready to start um, with our bag. So we're going to need the glue. You can use tear tape. I did not. So um, we are cutting up in that center part where the center bottom of our bag is. Just cut up on both ends. And if you lay your scissors right in that score line, it helps to guide them. At least it does for me. So now I'm going to start. You can see how this our bag goes this way, but I'm showing you this way. I'm going to start by adding glue here. I'm going to take one flap and fold it over. You can actually go like this. Make sure that you're not going too far. So there we have it. Now this side, you can decide if this is going to be the front. If this is your front, you want it to go this way. If this is your front, you want to tuck it this way. I am going to choose to do it this way. Just easier. Add some glue to this side. 
and I am going to square it up. Now I'm going to set it down for a minute, take my bone folder inside my bag, and just smooth that down. Well, I could have done a better job at squaring that up. So next we have this opposite side. So I'm going to start with that little small flap. And I got to check and make sure which way is going to the back. So that's the back. This is the front. So I'm going to start with this piece in. I'm going to tip it up just to there we go and do this one. Fold that down and our bag y'all is done except for the decorations so here's my gift bag I'm gonna take that um, yikes take my crocodile did I use the large in or the small in I used the small one now I know I took it in I think to about a half an inch or let's see, I know it couldn't have been that far. Just halfway there, I turn it around. And there we go. So now I have the holes for my bag. Now this is where the fun stuff comes into. I need to get my old, old organdy ribbon, which I love. And this is my very last bowl. I had like three of them. Oh, that's not stamping up. This is, I must have used all that one. Anyways, they did have some organdy ribbon. Don't ask me how much, y'all, how much ribbon I used. <laughs> it, it's an eyeball type of deal. I know that I probably used, oh, let's see. That's for, you had to double that. So that's 24. And then the bow, I would say 36, 40 inches of ribbon, okay? I'm not cutting it off my spool. I'm taking it, going in one side, going straight across to the other. Now I'm pulling plenty through that way. I'm going to pull it up this way. Let me get, yikes. Okay. This one is going to be on the left, the tag. So I'm deciding where I want my handle to be, how many, how far up you want your handle is that way. I'm going to take this now and I'm sure I have enough for a bow loops. Uh, maybe pull a little bit more. So let's see if I can tell you. I want 12 inches from my hole punch. I want at least 12 inches on that end. So that looks good. I'm going to take this now and I am going to tie a knot. To do that, I have to undo my ribbon. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how I kind of did the measuring there. So I'm going to take this and tie a knot. Am I going to have to untie all my ribbon now that I did it? Okay, so you figure it out. I get enough ribbon on both sides. This better be enough there. So I'm going to take this, tie a knot here. Just a nice, pretty little knot. Take it up where I want my handle. I'm gonna tie a knot. Kind of move my knot where I want it. That looks good. All right. So now both of these have to go back through your hole. 
gonna hopefully get them you can do them one at a time try to anyways not sure if I can do that with a little good force there we go and I'm gonna pull those through and hopefully just eyeball it get that in the center and we're gonna tie a bow and that's how I got my little side bow with all those pretty little knots in it. And yes, I know we haven't done the tag yet, but oh, isn't that really a pretty little effect? Okay, it doesn't matter which way. It can be on the left, it can be on the right, depending on where your front of your bag is. It looks like that's the back, so this tag is going to be on the left. It just depends on where you start it from. So, so, so cute. So let's do our gift tag. Um, where are those? So we need to do a little bit of stamping on this before we glue anything. And for all of the rest of our stamping, we're just using the leaf and we're using a uh, crumb cake here. Let me, hopefully I'm grabbing the right pad. Yes. And I need a bit of scratch paper. You guys know that I reuse it and reuse it till I can't use it any longer. So we're going to stamp both for the tag on the bag and for our um, sentiment for the front. So I'm going to stamp in crumb cake. I'm just going to stamp some leaves. It's going to tie it into the rest of our project. And wherever you want to put them, you put them. I just added a little hint of them on here. I just think it kind of like tied it all in. Just turn it. So there's one. Let's repeat said process and they're going to be in different places. Well, that's going right there. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it looks good. Hmm. Okay, so that, that one needs a little bit right there. Sometimes mistakes are good, and that one actually turned out really well. Accidents amaze me. Mm. So I'm going to not close up the crumb cake, but I'm going to move that aside. This is simply getting glued down to our tag. No dimensionals for the gift tag on our bag. Getting kind of tongue twisted there. And I love the label me lovely and the decorative circle punch just love them I am so excited to see what stamping up comes with out with in the new catalog I'm gonna add me a punch in the center and I am going to get where's the white I did use white do I want to use white this time no, I'm going to go with this cream. The thin. No, I'm going to go white because the ribbon's white. So I got roughly uh, six inches of the Baker's Twine out of the Baker's Twine combo pack. Any day now, you can cut that for me. And I am simply going to... Mm -hmm. Get it in the hole first. There's that. And we're going to put this on our gift bag. If you give it a little tug, you can find a, that little opening there. Tuck that in. And I tied a little bow. You can do a bow. You can do a knot. It's up to you how you want to uh, do this. I'm going to just tie a knot. I'm not sure if I gave myself enough to tie a bow and I don't want to fuss with it. So I'm just going to tie me a knot right there. Get 
give it a little tug back through the hole. And there is our beautiful little gift tag on the side of our bag. So this one, now I'm going to put that aside for our card, okay? We're going to do that in a minute because we're going to need more ribbon. So we have our pieces. Remember, our crumb cake layer number one is four by five and a half, and layer number two, which is basic white or like me, the DSP, is three and a half by five. Um, it's just a little longer, so it fits better in there. This we're going to stamp on. And we're going to do just the stamping with the leaves. And I'm going to show you how I positioned my leaves with this in mind. So I took one of my roses, my cottage rose here. And I laid it roughly where I knew I wanted it. For my card, I positioned it down this way. For the gift bag, I wanted the rose in the center. So I brought that in, inked up my stamp, and I said, okay, I want one there. So I simply moved that, and I put one there. I positioned my rose back to get a look at where else I could add it, and I liked adding some around here. And I knew I wanted one way down here, so lift that up. And there's a leaf and let's go to the other side just getting them positioned I would like one right about here so I'm gonna hold my finger there stamp that put my rose back on get a look I really like that one that one came out really nice needs a little something right here and right there so this one, I know that's perfect. And this one, I am going to go up down here. Now I'm going to fill in around. Now that I got my positions of where those are, I'm just going to bring in the leaf in different directions. So those are all going, going to come in that way. And it actually really, really works on the DSP. Hmm, interesting. I was wondering. So that is for our gift bag. Woohoo! Now the fun stuff. We get to start putting our goodies on there. So we have one of those. Let's bring in our elements. We have just one of these. I don't need both of you. One of those and one of these. And it's all where you want them. And we can't forget we have our leaves here that we did. This one, I know, is going to go in between. Let me move these aside. This one is going in between those two. And I only want to glue this little bit because this last one is going to get a wee tiny little dimensional. Just to give it a little lift but only on that leaf. So I'm going to do what I did before, hold my rose down, get some glue on just the bottom half. These two don't need any. And I told you I wanted this roughly about there. Okay, so I can lift that up and put that in its rightful place. My mouth is really dry today. Mm. And the next bit is about positioning all our other little goodies. And each time I do this, I will tell you uh, my flowers kind of go in different areas. So I think this would go really pretty here. And it is the same position right there. Uh, maybe I'll do the same. I'll try. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Sometimes mm, it doesn't always work like that. This one, I kind of like the idea of it being there. Let's see, we could do the leaf there or the leaf up there. One of these is going down here. Okay, I don't like that one down at the bottom. So this one will come in here. 
and this little leaf is going to come down there. So this one is going to go right here in this corner. And I'm going to cut that long, long stem off. Don't need any of that long stem. I really need to get out my wee little bottle of glue. I do not like using the big bottle of Tombow for this. Okay, so I'm going to move that aside. First little die cut piece is going down. I could probably do all of this in place. Let's see. This tends to just get too much glue everywhere, but I'm not going to stop now and get my little bottle. The glue is probably frozen <laughs> as cold as it is. And I know I complain about that a lot. I do apologize if that bothers some of you. It's just a fact. Uh, uh, the heater's on out here. I was trying not to turn it on as it's supposed to be a gorgeous, gorgeous day. But I couldn't come out here and redo this video without some heat. I have a sweatshirt on. Okay, now I will need to bring this back for me to place this right where I want it. And this one, I think I'm gonna, that one should, coulda, shoulda gone, coulda, shoulda, wouldas. Maybe I'll bring that down. Okay, that I like better. This one, there. So I'm going to keep my rows in place and just touch those little corners of those leaves and now tuck it up there. Hopefully. Stay put. Now, before I go putting my rows on, I'm going to glue this down to the crumb cake. And I know I just love that DSP. Sometimes it's meant to show what you can do with it. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So now it's got its matting down its layers. And we're going to put our gorgeous rows on the front on, of course, dimensionals. So let's see, one there, one there. So about five should cover that. And you can put as many dimensionals on you want. Um, <coughs> I did need to put in a large order in April and I'll probably have to, well, I know that I have to do two now because I want the new punches, the new circle punches and they're not in going to be available until like the 17th which is not conducive to what I want but hey sometimes you just got to learn to wait patience so this is our gorgeous card we're going to add that wink Estella if I can find it absolutely beautiful card do the leaves brush that good stuff all over and it's so pretty, especially in the center. And now we're going to put it on our gift bag. And then we're going to do our card. And basically, our card is truly mimicking our gift bag. Ooh. So I don't want to get it in my... Look at that. It's going to get so sticky. So, so pretty. We do need some bling, but we'll wait till we finish our card. So there is the gorgeous, gorgeous gift bag. And it's just as beautiful inside. Let's do our card. So we're going to do the same thing again. We need my little scratch paper. And I get to show you one more time. Now, like I said, on this, you can see my card right here. This is going to go down in the corner. So that is going to change the position of some of my pieces. I'm going to start with this leaf. I want it tucked in, but oh, that's perfect. Perfect. 
perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm going to start with a little dimensional right there. Actually, I'm going to pop that down. <laughs> Me and my craziness. I didn't want my leaf to move, guys. So I'm just going to flip it up this way because it's, it's in the perfect position. There it is. It's not going nowhere. Now I can look at everything where I want it. So there is my rose. Now it's time to stamp the leaves. So I am going to add some leaves down here to the bottom. Like so. I know I want one coming in from this top corner. There's nothing going to be over here so I can stamp like so except for a little flower oh so pretty and my flower is still down here so i've got room to really bring this leaf down into it and i'm going to do that like so i'm going to do a top little bit and over here i want a leaf coming up out of my roses, my flowers. So I'm going to do that one right there. And then I'm going to bring a tip in. Ooh, and I got ink on me. Not good. That's okay. So there is that. And we're going to use this again on the inside. The card gets just as pretty, but let's finish the front. So our rose, like we said, goes there. Now bring in our gorgeous little elements. So this one, we could scoot that up some. Oh, that would be really pretty, but not so fast, okay? I'm telling myself that too. Not so fast. You can't forget, we have our other focal point right here. So this needs to be in place. This needs to come down to figure out where... Um, the rest of my elements are going to go. So this can still go here. It just needs to get tucked further down like so. So let's go ahead and put this in its place. I'm going to hold my finger there. Hopefully this does it and put little bits of glue. If I had my little glue bottle, it would be so much better. So I know I want that right there. This one didn't get any glue at the top of the flower. That should tack that down, hopefully. There wasn't glue on my fingers. So you see, there's my rows. Those are peeking out. This is going to go here. In fact, we can go ahead and include this circle, decorative circle, maybe we can, in its spot. Right like that. Because this is going to go up on dimensional and our ribbon's going to go behind there. Next, we have our other floral elements. I know this one is going to come down here, and I kind of like that farther up than I did the last one. This leaf, let's see, this is going to be just a little different. I like the idea of that being up there, and this little leaf is just going to come down there. So I like where everything is at right now. I'm going to hold on to that stem in my hand, and then I'm going to chop it off. because I don't want it <laughs> on the card. It's just being useful at the moment. So I really like that there. It's higher up than I originally did, but this time it looks rather pretty. I'm gonna just add glue there. Lift this up, put my leaf right there. Just want a little bit sticking out. And this one is going to come up kind of like right there. So once again, using my finger in place, see if this works. This is not going to work. 
I don't put glue anywhere else it may work. All right. So all of my elements are on. I'm going to trim this little stem off because I don't like that. And now I'm going to put this on with dimensionals. And the same thing, we're going to put five on there. Two, three, oh, one in the middle, one there, one there, two more should cover it. One on that leaf and one up here with those. So, by the way, I am thinking about doing a stamp a stack class and sending out um, some DSP and seeing about doing a live class with y'all would have to cut your own cardstock. I'll be having that information. I already got the DSP done. I just haven't got around to doing a video seeing if anybody would like to do that with me. So gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. We are going to not put it on. Let's see. Oh, no, we put it all the way around the card. So we are going to. I looked at my card. I'm like, did I do it or not? We are going to glue this together and glue it on our card. And then our ribbon is going to go all the way around the flap of our card. And when you put this on that crumb cake, boy, it is subtle, but it is so pretty. Come on. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right. Don't go nowhere. This now is getting glued onto, and we're not done with crumb cake, okay? I know it's hanging out there, but we're, we're not done with it, okay? We, we need it. And trust me, it is going to look gorgeous on the inside of this card. So now we need that ribbon. I'm not sure exactly how much enough to go in the card like so. And I want a bow. I'm going to pull it this way. I want a bow right here off center. I just want it there. So I will need enough for a loop on that side and enough for a loop on this side. I guess I could measure it real quick, huh? Ooh, that's going to be tight. So this is <laughs> 12, 22 inches. I would say 24 to be safer than what I just did. 24 would be my bet. So I am going to tie me a bow, maybe. I am so challenged with nails. It is scary, but I am enjoying them. And I love the color. I really do. Um, have them cut really short. It is a bit better, but maybe it's a learning curve, though I've done this years and years. I will get them done and take them off or pop them up. Couldn't do gels. Gels don't stick to my nails. I am too hard on them. They pop off everywhere. So this bow, you can do it however you want. I like the nice pretty bow. And I'm going to scooch it down in the center of my decorative circle punch. Okay, that's a little too big for there. And now this, not sure what I just dropped, is going to go on two dimensionals, top and bottom because I have the ribbon going in between there. So there's one, there's two. Isn't that pretty? And it is lovely with that DSP. Lovely, lovely, lovely. But on my card, I can tell I really liked it. Let me get this farther right next to this. And I'm going to have to cut these long tails of my bow. Ooh. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's the perfect bow for this one. Perfect, perfect bow. I like where it's at. Oh, so darling. 
Love it. Now I got to secure it with a glue dot. It has to get secured with the glue dot. So right where that knot is, as long as I can get that backing off and away from my project, I will be good. Oh my goodness, that is so, so, so pretty for the inside of the card. And then we are finished because I do, I will show you the envelope that is done. This, this, this ties the whole project together. I can't believe it is so simple. So that crumb cake, and I'm just, you know, putting the leaves on there willy nilly kind of. But look at that. It just kind of like makes it all come together. It's it's absolutely fabulous. Ah, I love it. So I need an envelope. I didn't pull one out. So let's see. <laughs> do I want to do? I'll do very vanilla. How is that going to look with that? Mm, I don't like it. No, that was in the front. I got to get a different. Where's my package of envelopes? I thought I opened, do I not have any white ones? Nope, there I do. Okay, so our envelope. The envelope, please. We are going to stamp a leaf here and just a leaf in the left bottom corner. Gorgeous. It is very, very pretty card. Now, you may like the white version. Okay, this is it with the um, white or natural card. This is with the DSP. That is totally up to you, and it's okay. Whatever it is you want to do, that is, um, you know, it's your card. Use what you have and make yourself happy. So I am going to add some path back pearls on here. Some really large ones, actually, because I want that. I think that would be really pretty. Let's see. One there. Instead of the little uh, gemstones I used on the other one, let's really make it different. Maybe this one is sticking to me. Kind of like that one there. And one more. Oh, definitely, 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 definitely like that. So let's put some now on here. And this one, I can go really big. Let's see. thinking no I don't like it there but I do like it I want one right there I want the largest down there I'm gonna stick one up in this corner maybe and one more for good measure and this gift bag now I can get this make sure it's public right you know get it right um not sure kind of thinking i'm out of placement here i might need two more two more just because i think it needs it so we're gonna put one way up there oh you know what let's do one more large one three of the mediums i mean i've got them they've been sitting here oh yes right there right there has it do, 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 do. love it love it love it you guys know i do i get excited so this one has wink stella all wink stella the envelope so like i said it is up to you on which version um you like the best in which one you choose to do but i did give you a bit of an option here and I do so apologize that, you know, here I thought I had this video up and it actually, it's up there. All right. Nobody can see it. Me. <laughs> 
it's one of those things. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you take a chance and make this project. If you do, I would love for you to join my Facebook group. It, it's just a place to show what you create. And I know there's a lot of those out there. Um, but it's Allie's Wonderland Creations. You're welcome to join. Um, I would love to see your projects. And I want to personally thank you for inspiring me and being so kind in your comments. And it keeps me motivated to keep sharing with you. And I can't express my gratitude and my appreciation for each and every one of you out there. You are wonderful kind, caring people. And I really appreciate it. So take care and come back and visit me in my wonderland. Bye-bye now.